Good morning. Happy Saturday. Happy first weekend with nothing to do in quite a long time. I'm so excited to be productive around the house this weekend. So right now uh, I'm in the Starbucks drive-thru. It is about 8.30. I'm gonna grab some coffee and then go back home and get to work. This weekend was a three-day weekend, so I was able to get a ton accomplished. I did a lot of cleaning. I also have three different dinner ideas for you guys in this video. My biggest project this weekend was to get my bathroom closet cleaned out and organized, which took me a lot longer than I thought, but I got it done. So lots of cooking and cleaning motivation and today's weekend prep video. Let's get started. So I just wanted to take some time starting out on Saturday morning to kind of get my bearings and make a to-do list. Uh, I always find that I get way more done when I make a list because it's motivating for me to cross things off. And it also helps me kind of try to lay my day out in a way that's most productive. I definitely find that I end up putting way too many things on my to-do list. Like I always think I can get more done than I actually can, but I think that's pretty much all of us. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not, you know, as realistic as I should be about the things that I can accomplish. Um, so I'm going to be doing that this morning. And then I also wanted to rewrite some of my notes. So I've been keeping a notebook with all of my notes in it. And these are notes from basically like online classes I'm taking or books I'm reading. I basically wanted everything all in one spot. And so I had some different like papers and post-it notes that I needed to transfer in into that notebook. I actually took an online class through Megan Sumrall and I'll link her class down below, but she is opening up a new class on the one notebook method. So basically, she teaches planning and time management for women, um, but she's also starting this new class in March where she's basically going to teach you how to keep all of your notes and organize them into one notebook. So I'm super excited for that to start. Um, I'll link her site and her classes down below. If you struggle with focus or time management or planning or anything like that, um, I highly recommend her class. It is a little bit of an investment, but she is a really great teacher. So I wanted to get that done this morning along with my to-do list. And then I also needed to scan some receipts. So you guys know I use Fetch and Ibotta. And usually with Fetch, what I'll do is I'll just let the receipts kind of collect in my purse throughout the week. And then on the weekends, I will scan them all. Um, I actually got a lot of points this weekend for scanning a gas receipt from Casey's. So just a heads up there. And if you guys don't have those apps and you wanna be on my team, I'll link the sites down below. Free money is always good, right? So this note notebook that I'm using is actually from Erin Condren and I really like it because it's super sturdy and the um, material of the pages or the paper I guess what I should say <laughs> is really high quality um, and so I really enjoy like writing in it and taking notes in it um, but I've got a lot of things that I want to accomplish this year in terms of like both on YouTube and off YouTube really and so I'm trying to get more organized in uh, my planning and my note taking and all of that I do pretty well but every so often I find that I struggle with focus and so um, I kind of have to go back to the basics in terms of planning and organizing all of my notes. I am terrible at just writing things down on sticky notes and then just letting them collect all over my desk and what I found with this one notebook method is it's really nice to have all of your notes in one place. That way you can go back and reference things and when you write things down it helps your brain process things in a different way. I know that I've said this before you guys are probably getting tired of me <laughs> saying this, but um, I get so much more out of like an audiobook or a class when I write things down and I can go back and refer to those notes. And I'm also terrible about remembering things. I have a terrible <laughs> memory, honestly. Like I can't remember books I've read. I can't, I can hardly remember the synopsis of them. I'm terrible at remembering movie quotes, all of that. And so I definitely need to write things down as soon as an idea pops into my head or I will definitely forget it. Okay, so I'm just sharing with you some of my notes here that I took um, when I took a class on time blocking. So it's kind of fun too to use, you know, different colors and stickers and 
you know, that's my inner 90s kid <laughs> coming out. Um, but I do think it's great to have this to be able to look back on these notes in the future. Um, this is also a webinar that I listened to on the book Deep Work by Cal Newport. Um, that is something that I always try to work on is having focus to do um, deep work. So I definitely recommend that book. But here is my to do list. So for Saturday, I wanted to write out some thank you notes, clean my kitchen, post a YouTube video, wash the sheets, catch up on laundry, plan uh, the rest of my videos for February, and I needed to do some calendar updates. And then on Sunday, I will actually be delivering a lasagna for lasagna love. So I did take a break from lasagna love for a while um, after my mom had passed away. I just had a lot of things on my mind and I felt like I didn't have the, the time or the emotional capacity to um, do anything extra, but now I am back to it. So I got matched this weekend with a family and that's something that I'll be doing this weekend also is uh, making them a lasagna and I also got a salad and garlic bread to go with it. And then Adam went with me to deliver that on Sunday. Um, thank you so much if you have signed up to be a volunteer for lasagna love. Um, I know that so many of you have reached out or, you know, talked to me in the comments about doing that. Um, I highly recommend it. It's very rewarding, especially if you like to cook and you're not sure, you know, how or what to do within your community to help people. It's an organization that basically matches people that need a meal with lasagna chefs, and then they can enjoy some, some good old home cooking. So I'll leave that link uh, down below, but I'm just going to get started cleaning my kitchen this morning because it was a mess <laughs> from this past week. So the first thing that I'm going to do is work on loading the dishwasher. Okay, so once that is loaded, I'm going to go ahead and put the tablet in. I get asked questions why I don't put the tablet in the door um, and sometimes it gets stuck and it doesn't come out and then the dishes don't wash properly. So that's, that's why I do it that way. And obviously I had some dishes that I needed to hand wash. So I wanted to get those done as well. Um, I'm hoping as you guys watch this video with me uh, this for this weekend prep that you get some motivation to get things done around your own house. Maybe put it on while you're um, cleaning too so you can clean and get things done with me. I know that I am constantly watching YouTube videos trying to get get motivation also to, <laughs> to get things done. So uh, maybe we can just do it together. This was actually the first weekend in a long time that we didn't have anything planned. And I actually forgot it was a three day we <laughs> weekend. So you can see when I made my to-do list on this day, I actually didn't include Monday because I didn't even um, think about it being a holiday, but it was super nice to kind of just hang around home, um, get a lot of things done that I needed to get done. And the big thing that I'm going to accomplish in uh, today's video is organizing my bathroom closet, which you'll see a little bit later. All right. So once I got all of my dishes, dishes washed, I'm going to clean out my sink. So I shared this in a previous video, but I got this bundle of cleaners on Amazon. Amazon. It's called the pink stuff. I think I actually saw this maybe on a TikTok video or a YouTube short. I can't remember. I honestly try not to get on TikTok very much because it is such a huge time suck, but I do like watching like cleaning and organizing content on there. Um, but anyway, I like to use this cream cleanser in my sink. It does a really good job. Um, I think I showed you guys in last week's weekend prep video, how I used some of the cleaning paste on my stove and it worked really well. So I'm just kind of using one of my scrub brushes. This is a brush that I get from Grove, but I think you can get them on Amazon too. So I'll try to link it down below, but it does a really good job of um, scrubbing out my sink and I just keep it in um, the little container that it comes in on the side of the sink. That way it's super easy to scrub out my sink whenever I need to. Okay. So after I gave it a scrub, I'm going to go ahead and rinse it out with hot water. Isn't it always just the most satisfying thing to, <laughs> to clean out your sink and wash it out? It doesn't stay clean very long, you know, because, you know, right after this, I have to make lunch and feed everyone, you know, three times a day for the rest of my life. <laughs> But uh, at least you can enjoy a little bit of, of clean uh, while it lasts. Okay, so I'm also going to clean out the garbage disposal and I like to use these CLR garbage disposal cleaning tabs. The only place I can find them is at Menards. I'm sure you can probably get them online too, but I think they just do a great job and they actually smell really good. So um, I do like using those to clean out my disposal. All right, so here are all the dishes that I hand washed. Super glad to get all of these 
<laughs> washed and uh, ready to dry. That was a that was a relief to get those done. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off my butcher block. I like to just clear everything off, um, usually on the weekends, and spray it down and wipe it. Um, I actually get a lot of questions on this. Um, I have a video that I basically made dedicated to how I take care of my butcher blocks. So I'll link that down below. Um, but I believe this is maple. And when we built our house, we had this um, custom made because it was kind of a weird size. And it actually wasn't that terribly expensive because we did use maple. At some point it will probably have to be replaced, but for now it's it's fine. Part of the character of Butcher Block is you're going to have dings and and probably a little bit of staining and, you know, that's that's just part of having it, right? But um you know, you can check out that other video if you're interested in how I clean it um, on an ongoing basis, but normally just every week I spray it down with multi-surface spray and I um, wipe it it with a hot cloth in between the times when I actually condition and oil it. All right, so back to the to-do list. I'm gonna cross out uh, clean my kitchen because bam, I got that done. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on some laundry. It was my goal to get caught up on laundry this weekend. And I would say I probably got caught up on 90% of it, which is better than nothing. <laughs> Um, it's always a struggle to have the kids, you know, make sure that they keep up with bringing their laundry to the laundry room and putting their clean clothes away and all that. You guys know mom life, the struggle is real. So I just wanted to make sure that I got as caught up with it as I could uh, before the week ahead because I don't always do laundry during the week. I know that some people do a load um, every single day. And honestly, if I did that, I would probably uh, keep up with it, but I like doing it in larger batches on the weekends. That way I can just sit and fold a lot of things all at once. I don't know. I don't I don't mind folding laundry. It's just kind of taking the time to, to sit down and do it. Okay, so it's a little bit later in the day now. I'm gonna mark some things off. I got a YouTube video posted. That always takes longer than I think it's going to. And I also washed um, our sheets in the master bedroom. All right, so I wanna take a quick break and thank Warby Parker for sponsoring this week's weekend prep video. Working with them on my channel is a no-brainer because as you guys know, I always think that glasses are a fashion accessory and I have a ton <laughs> of their glasses. Um, I purchase them quite frequently. I love them. I love having different glasses to go with my different outfits. But Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care both online and in stores. They offer eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. The best part is that their glasses start at just $95 including prescription lenses. I have to tell you guys, I took Kira and myself actually to the eye doctor for our annual checkup a couple uh, weeks ago and I was looking at the glasses while we were there. They are so expensive. I'm talking like at least 150 going all the way up to $400 a pair. I'm like, no way. <laughs> No way. Why would I do that when I can get my glasses from Warby Parker starting at just $95? Um, you guys can try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. You can order five pairs of glasses to try on at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. They ship free and they also include a prepaid return shipping label. So if you guys want to try them, you can go to warbyparker.com slash Jen. I'll have the link in the description box below. You can try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash Jen. Okay, I'm gonna share with you guys the pairs that I got in my try-on haul this time. I got some really great ones. The first one is called Brady and it's in a black matte. I actually really, really like this one. I think it might be my favorite. Um, the next one is a clear frame and it's Felix. Um, and then it has a kind of an oak color stem. I really, really like these as well. I already have a pair of clear frames, so um, I'm not sure if I need another one, but I really do <laughs> like them a lot. Um, the next one is called Hector and it is in the shade Driftwood Fade. So you can see that the frames are kind of like darker on the top and then crystal at the bottom. Another thing I like about Warby Parker is that they carry a bunch of different widths. So I have a big head. I have no idea why, but <laughs> I always have to get the wide size. So it's it's good that they carry all kinds of different widths and, and colors. That way you have plenty to choose from. Um, this one is called Yardly and I do like these, but they felt a little bit snug. So 
I probably won't keep those. And then the last one I really liked also, this one is called Landon and it's in a forest green color. I'm not sure if I like the forest green. Um, it's different, but I definitely like the frame. So that may be a possibility as well. So I'm not quite sure. I haven't decided uh, which one I'm going to get, but once again, I'll have that link down in the description box below, morbyparker.com slash Jen. As you can see, you just box it up, put your prepaid shipping label on and send it back. It is super duper easy. All right, so it is now Saturday evening and it's time to make dinner. So I am going to make this uh, P.F. Chang's chicken lettuce wraps, although I'm making them for the kids. So I'm also going to make some rice to go with it. So I just have two pounds of ground chicken. Actually, it's probably about a pound and a half in my Instant Pot here. Um, I thought I would cook this in the Instant Pot because I was already cooking a lot of other things on the stove and I needed the room. So I'm just gonna brown that up. And then I have a nonstick skillet on my stove here that I'm going to add some avocado oil to and I had some uh, pot sticker dumplings from Aldi that I'm going to cook up. So I'm going to put those into the pan and let them heat up. I just like them to saute in the oil a little bit before I add the water and steam them. I find that that is the best way to keep them from sticking to the bottom of the pan. Even if the pan's nonstick, you know, since it's dough, doughy, sometimes it has a chance or a a propensity to stick. So after they've sauteed for a few minutes, I'm just gonna pour in uh, probably about a cup or a cup and a half of water. And then you just wanna put the lid on and let them steam until they are cooked all the way through. And as the water evaporates off, the oil in the pan will crisp them up. So my chicken is done. Um, I am going to go ahead and add the uh, sauce to that. I can't remember where I got this P.F. Chang's sauce, but it turned out really, really good. I would recommend it if you ever find it in your grocery store. I think maybe I found it at Hy-Vee. So I'm just going to put that into there. And then I did end up adding about half a cup of water just to make sure that there was enough liquid in the Instant Pot. And this is going to cook on high pressure for just five minutes, super quick, and the meat will turn out really tender. So like I said, I'm going to make some rice with this. I had some boil in the bag rice in my pantry. I think I got that on sale at Hy-Vee. Um, several months ago and I wanted to use it up. So I'm just going to boil that. It's boil in the bag brown rice. If you have issues cooking rice, I would highly recommend <laughs> this method too. It works really well. And then I thawed out some uh, steak strips that I had in the freezer and I'm gonna be using um, a sauce with this that I believe I got in my Misfits Market box. Um, it's like a beef bulgogi sauce. It ended up actually being really good and Adam and I liked it a lot. It was a little bit spicy though. I'm also gonna cook some asparagus with this. So I'm just getting that on a pan with some olive oil to roast in the oven. And then I did cook these steak strips until all of the liquid evaporated and they started to get a little crispy on the bottom. Um, the kids did not eat this because they thought it was way too spicy, but this is the Om Sam um, Korean spicy bulgogi starter sauce. So I just put that into the pan. I used three packets. I believe this is about a pound and a half of beef um, and then I did add a little bit of water in there to loosen it up as well and then just kind of let it simmer to let all of the flavors meld but here is what Adam's plate looked like I don't know why I always show you guys his plate <laughs> But um, here is the rice that he had with the beef bulgogi. I put some green onions on the top, some asparagus on the side, and the pot stickers with some soy sauce. And the kids had the same thing, but they had the ground chicken over rice. Okay, so dinner is done. I thought I would share with you guys a quick uh, grocery haul that I got from Misfits Market. I actually just posted a video today. That's what I spent most of this afternoon working on was editing <laughs> that video. I did a video of Misfits Market versus Hungry root versus imperfect foods so I can link that video down below but I did get another box today so I thought I would share it with you I did decide to try some of this Phil's finest Korean barbecue style grass-fed beef I'm surprised at how red <laughs> it looks but it has spices already in it so it says it has beets scallions and gochujang hot pepper paste so that will be interesting I got some Parmesan cheese. I always like to keep this on hand because if I want to make like homemade Alfredo, I don't know, there's just several recipes I make a lot that call for it. So I thought I would get some of that. Um, I got some provolone cheese. Adam likes this on sandwiches. So I thought that would be good. 
And then I decided to try these fork in the road uh, breakfast sausages. So we'll probably use those for breakfast tomorrow. I got some of this Sam's Famous Salsa. This is something that I've never seen around where I live. It's medium salsa, so we'll try that. Um, this is Romesco, and I have never been able to find this around me, not once ever. Um, actually, Adam and I went out for Valentine's Day last weekend, and I got like a surf and turf dinner, and this was this one of the sides that came with it. Um, they just like steamed it really simply and put like butter and salt on it. It was really good, so I thought I would grab that. Uh, I got some of this Ithaca hummus. If you haven't tried this brand, it's really good. I actually like the plain one. One, the best but they do have some flavored uh, varieties as well I got some feta cheese crumbles in case I want to do any uh, Greek type salads this week I got some cottage cheese I may actually be using this tomorrow when I'm going to make a lasagna for lasagna love uh, I got some milk it's just plain whole milk for cereal or cooking or whatever we need it for I also saw they had these strained tomatoes I don't know that I've ever used strained tomatoes before <laughs> I thought I would try them. It's actually quite a large package, so I'll use those for something. Uh, I got some sugar snap peas. The kids really love to snack on those, and I haven't purchased them in a little bit. I got a cucumber, a um, salad mix. This is, uh, it says tender leaves, so I'm not quite sure. Oh, it has spinach, uh, arugula, green oak, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, greens. Okay, and then this is Rome stick, jalapeno, pineapple, and uncured bacon. I've never seen this brand before. So anyway, I thought those would be neat to try. Looks like there's several different varieties in there. And then I also got a bag of this Omsum uh, Yuzu Misoyaki. Hopefully I'm saying that right. This is like a, um, a Japanese sauce similar to what I used tonight. Or act actually it's the same brand of what I used tonight on the beef. So hopefully this is good. It says you can make it with salmon, eggplant, chicken, or beef. So I'm actually going to put this stuff away and then I'm going to go down in the basement and we're going to play a game. Good morning guys. Happy Sunday. It is about 7.45 right now. I'm going to go ahead and um, ride my spin bike and then we're going to get productive for the rest of the day. So this is the game we were playing uh, last night, uh, Hunt a Killer. I actually saw this on several different YouTube videos and decided to get it. We had two boxes and in the first one we had to solve, we had to find out where the person died and then in the second box we had to find out what time, like a, a range of time that the person died. So I don't know, I thought it was super fun. They send you like all of this stuff in each box you know, like fake brochures and stuff that has clues in it. And there's like, there's like an autopsy report and like notes and stuff. So we played it last night with Kira. She had actually had a lot of fun helping us. So definitely if you have older kids, I think it's something fun you can do with them. So I think I can go online and request the next box now. And then in the next one, we have to find what? The, the uh, suspect? Or we don't know yet. We know the suspects now. We. <clears throat> I think start figuring out which we start investigating the suspects in the next box. I think who done it. Anyway, so um, I just bought this for us because I thought it would be fun. But I do have a coupon code if you guys want to try it. So I'll link it down below. Um, I think it's like thirty percent off your first box. But yeah, I think it's super fun. I highly recommend it. It's again one of those things I was influenced by influencers and so ended up really liking it. Okay, so I decided to make some smoothies for all of us this morning for breakfast. So I'm gonna add some frozen bananas to the blender along with some yogurt. I love making smoothies just to use up all of the things I have in the fridge and the freezer. Um, I tend to freeze fruit if we don't eat it right away. That way I can make it into smoothies, it's super easy. Um, I also added some almond milk to this and some spinach and uh, the color of the smoothie wasn't very pretty, but they turned out 
<laughs> they, they turned out pretty good. Um, I've actually moved away from using protein powder in my smoothie um, just because I feel like I don't need it with all of like the veggies and fruit and almond milk and yogurt and whatever in there. Um, but you know, it's up to you. I have found some protein powders before that I actually really like. I just kind of have gotten away from using them. Okay, so I'm just gonna blend this up. When I'm making big batches of smoothies, I prefer to make them in my big blender. This is actually a Kasori blender. If I can find it on Amazon, I'll link it down below. I really do like it, but I'm not quite sure they have the same um, version anymore, but it works really, really well. I assume it's like similar to a Vitamix or something like that, even though I've never had a Vitamix. Okay, so I was gonna go to the grocery store today. You guys have already seen that grocery haul, so I wanted to sit down and make my meal plan. I have not been the greatest at uh, both making and following my meal plans lately, but it has helped me so much, honestly. Um, this week I've been following it and I did try to um, kind of pick things that I had on hand so that I could basically just go shopping mostly for like lunches, dinner, or I'm sorry, breakfast, lunches, and snacks. And then I try to um, plan things for dinner that are sort of based around what we already have in the house so I can get some of those things in the freezer and pantry used up. Okay, so I am going to be making a lasagna to deliver later today for lasagna love. So I'm gonna make my meat sauce in the Instant Pot because I've got other stuff to do this morning and I don't wanna babysit <laughs> stove. So I've got two pounds of ground beef in here. I just seasoned this with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and some um, Italian seasoning. I typically do not put onions in here when I'm making it for someone else because I know a lot of folks, and especially this person has kids, they don't care for that. Um, I'm going to use two jars of just regular marinara sauce. This just happens to be Aldi marinara sauce. And then um, I'm just going to stir this up, put the lid on, and probably just do high pressure for eight minutes. Um, since everything's already cooked, I just kind of want to meld the flavors and get the beef tender. Okay, so I got home from the store a little bit ago. I stopped at Subway and grabbed some subs on the way home, so we ate that for lunch. Now I have to put all of these groceries away, so that's what I'm going to work on doing. I filmed my grocery haul. I'm going to try to get that video up later this evening, and then I need to finish my lasagna, assembling my lasagna. So the sauce is done. I just have that in there cooling, and then over here I have some um, lasagna noodles. I just soak these in boiling water, and it works really well you don't have to boil them and mess with all that um they they soften up like perfectly so super easy to do it that way okay so i'm gonna go ahead and make the cheese mixture for my lasagna so i like to use a combination of cottage cheese and ricotta cheese um i also know that some people make their lasagna with bechamel sauce and i was actually thinking about trying that this weekend but then i was like no i have some cottage cheese i have to use up so <laughs> use that instead um but i definitely want to try that sometime in the near future. So for mine, I normally just mix up some cottage cheese, some ricotta cheese, and then I put one egg in there. I usually season it with Parmesan cheese and then salt and pepper and some Italian seasoning. Um, sometimes I like to add fresh um, herbs. If I have those, I'll put some basil in there or some thyme or something like that. Um, this particular lasagna was for a single mom and she had like four kids. And so I tried to to, I mean, what I know not all kids are picky, but what I try to do when I make lasagnas, especially if I know there's a lot of kids in the family, is I tried to make it just like plain, <laughs> like because I know that kids like plain stuff. That's why I don't include the onion in it. Um, and if it's a larger family, sometimes I will also like I've had requests for like I think I got one one time where there was a household of like four adults and six kids or four adults and four kids or something like that. I'll actually make um, a, a lasagna and a pan of baked macaroni and cheese. Um, that way they kind of have some variety and normally all kids <laughs> love macaroni and cheese. Okay, so I'm using um, these foil pans that I get at Costco. They do a really great job. I put some sauce, uh, meat sauce in the bottom of my pan followed by some of the noodles and then I'm going to add some cheese mixture over the top of that. Layer with more sauce, sprinkle on some mozzarella cheese, repeat the layers. I actually got quite a few layers in this pan um, and I also always ask the recipient if they would like it refrigerated and they can bake it themselves or I um, offer to bake it for them. 
them. Some people don't have um, working ovens, so they prefer to have theirs baked and delivered hot. There's actually one lady that I've probably delivered at least four or five lasagnas to now, um, and she does not have a working oven, and so she always asks me to bring it hot. Um, and actually, while I was off for a little while after I told you guys I took a break <laughs> from lasagna love, she texted me like several times and she's like, hey, do you know when you're gonna start back up again? I miss your lasagna. So it's actually very rewarding to do this. I, I highly recommend it. And if you're uncomfortable interacting with people, you can do a no contact drop off. In fact, that's what they normally recommend uh, because of COVID anyway. So yeah, I'm just gonna continue uh, assembling this and then I wrap it in foil. And I always do put a label on the top to basically tell them how long um, I think they should bake it. And I also let them know to let it sit for 15 minutes after it comes out of the oven. Um, otherwise, if you try to cut it right away, it will just spill all over the plate. You guys know how that is. Okay, so Adam helped me deliver the lasagna and we are back at home now. So I'm going to make dinner for us. So uh, my idea for this particular dinner was I had some um, ham or I had a ham bone in the freezer that we had left over. I think it was from Thanksgiving or Christmas. I can't exactly remember. Um, but anyway, what I ended up doing was I took the ham bone and I put it into the Instant Pot with uh, probably four to six cups of water and I cooked it on high pressure for uh, I think 45 minutes and once it was done I took it out and let it cool and then I skimmed the fat off the broth and that is what I'm going to use to make this potato soup. So right now I'm dicing up some onion. This soup turned out really really good. I actually just made it kind of like I make all of my potato soups. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't really have a recipe, but there is a recipe for potato soup in my cookbook if you have that. Um, but essentially I just saute onions in butter and then I add chopped potatoes and then I add some type of broth, either chicken or in this case ham broth. You um, boil the potatoes until they're tender and then you can add a mixture of milk and flour or milk and sour cream and flour and just thicken it up and season it to your taste. It always turns out really, really great. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish peeling up and cutting up these potatoes. I would say for potato soup, just make sure that you don't cut the chunks too large um, and make sure that you try to cut them all the same size. That way they kind of cook all together <laughs> at the same size. Um, otherwise you'll end up with like chunks of crunchy potato and who the heck uh, wants that. But I probably used, um, I don't know, I think I ended up using like four cups of broth for this recipe and I probably used like five to six smaller russet potatoes. I don't know how, but I ended up with like a plethora of potatoes in my, in my pantry. So um, I'm gonna have to figure out uh, some things to use them up with. Okay, so I've got my onion sauteing here in about four tablespoons of butter and I just sauteed that until it is tender. And then after the onion is tender, um, I added my potatoes and then I'm gonna add my ham broth on top of that. I ended up with, I think about eight cups of ham broth if I'm remembering correctly. So I did take half of it and freeze it um, in case I want to make more in the future, which I'll definitely do because this turned out really, really great. But once the potatoes were in there, I I just went ahead and poured the broth in and especially with this ham broth it was very salty anyway so I heart I well not very salty but it was salty enough so I definitely did not have to add any more salt um, if you just use regular chicken broth you probably will have to add um, quite a bit of salt to it so um, this is the ham that the, or the ham bone you know whatever whatever you want to call it but obviously there were still some bits of meat left on there so I wanted to pick these off and kind of just tear them into small small pieces because in addition to the stock or the broth, I also wanted to include some chunks of ham um, in the soup as well. Everyone really loved this. Adam was kind of like a little bit suspicious. He was like, you're gonna put ham in potato soup? And I'm like, well, of course, why wouldn't that be delicious? I mean, don't you put bacon? <laughs> <laughs> on potato soup, but he actually really liked it. Um, and Connor really liked it as well. Kira is, I feel like she's going through a phase right now where she's a little bit picky. Um, so she did not in enjoy it that much, but she did eat a little bit of it. And then on the side of this, I did make some sandwiches. So for the kids, I made them um, some turkey and ham and cheese on croissants. And then we had some cut up veggies and fruit with it. And for Adam, I ended up making him um, like a grilled sandwich, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Okay, so 
So after the potatoes are tender, I'm going to pour in some milk. And this is milk that I had whisked with maybe about half a cup of sour cream, just to give it a little bit of extra richness and a quarter cup of flour. And you can just stir that into the soup, bring it back up to a simmer and it will thicken it really, really well. Um, highly recommend this method. It works really, really great. So now I'm going to pour the ham in. You can see that Murphy is standing by ready for some to drop on the floor. Um, I probably didn't add that much ham, maybe just a cup, but this is what it looks like after it thickened. This turned out so good. I'm looking forward to eating it for lunches this week because it was it was really, really, <laughs> really delicious. And um, here's that grilled sandwich I made for Adam. So I put some cheese and some chives on top of the soup. And this is just a turkey, pepper jack, and bacon um, grilled sandwich on sourdough bread. A really delicious dinner. All right, so I overslept this morning, but we are taking Murphy to the vet for his annual checkup slash vaccinations so I'm gonna do that this morning and then maybe I'm gonna go get my car washed I'll see come here you guys sit down you guys sit down yeah no 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 don't jump sit down say hi to the people say hi we're just waiting for the doctor to come in <laughs> Okay, so I thought I would re go back to my to-do list and review with you guys because it dawned on me, I think it was Saturday, that, uh, oh, this was a three-day weekend. It's kind of like, kind of like a bonus because I totally forgot that it was gonna be a three-day weekend. So I get to get more stuff done. So, okay, so for Saturday, I got my kitchen clean. I posted a YouTube video. I washed my sheets, so I got all that done. Uh, catch up on laundry, I'm gonna go ahead and cross that off too because I pretty much did that. I needed to plan my videos for the rest of February, so I need to finish that. I wanna try and post a video every day for the rest of February, so. We'll see if I can get that done. And then I have a bunch of emails that I need to go through and like put things on my calendar and schedule them out. So I did not get that done. I did not get my thank you notes done. My plan was to kind of sit down at my desk and do some of that like type of admin work last night. But then I ended up prioritizing posting a video, so I got that done instead. Um, I wanna get my office cleaned. What I had for Sunday was get my office cleaned, a uh, meal plan, which I did do that. Uh, make and deliver the lasagna, I did that. Um, I have a video posting today, I need to get the thumbnail done for that. Uh, another video that I wanna try and film today. And then I also want to get my, my bathroom closet reorganized. I've been saying that for like the last three weeks, but I think I'm gonna get it done today. So let me rewrite this because it's a mess and then we'll review what we need to do. Murphy um, had a good vet visit. He's all up to date on his vaccinations. Uh, we are gonna be boarding him in March because we're gonna be going on vacation for a week. So wanted to make sure that we had that done before that. So he had like his kennel cough vaccine and he needed um, his rabies updated and stuff. No, he's a tired, he's a tired boy. <laughs> Okay, just a second. Um, I also have a, a therapy appointment today. I do um, telehealth at the same office where I see my psychiatrist. I actually think that it's a neat option that they have that because my psychiatrist's office is like 50, 45, 50 minutes away. Yeah, we have nothing in the town. <laughs> where I live um, and so it's nice that I can do therapy via telehealth because then I don't have to um, take three hours out of my day to drive up there have the appointment and drive back so I think that's at noon today so that'll be an hour but so far I have my list today to complete my thank you notes plan my videos for February do my calendar updates clean my office post today's video, um, possibly film another video, organize my master bath, and I don't know. I, ha I have another video idea on here, but I'm probably not gonna have time to film it today, so we'll see. Um, and also that, de plan that depends on what I plan for the rest of February. So what am I gonna do now? Um, Adam is taking Kira to the orthodontist right now. She has her whatever every six week adjustment. Uh, Connor is actually at his grandparents. He spent the night there last night. So it's just me and Murphy all by our lonesome. 
Right, buddy? You heard me say his name, so he's coming over here. Okay. Well, maybe I will, I kind of wanted to make a breakfast casserole today because I have a recipe that I want to try and I have that sausage that I got at the store yesterday. So I don't know. I was thinking about making that for lunch maybe and then we could just have the leftovers for like breakfast meal prep this week. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. We'll see. All right, so here I am showing you my super embarrassing bathroom closet. It is a freaking mess. <laughs> like, there's like towels and sheets all over in there. I've just been like shoving extra shampoo and Kleenex and meds and bottles and whatever. This has needed to be done for a super, super long time. So um, it actually took me a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I ended up thinking, okay, I'm gonna give myself an hour to do this and it'll be all good, that'll be awesome. I'll get it done in an hour. No way. It took me at least two hours to get it done. And actually I had to stop and make dinner in the middle of it, but that's okay. So um, what I'm doing now is I'm getting some containers out. These are actually the home edit containers from uh, Walmart. If you've seen them there, um, I'll try and link them down below, but they're really sturdy, clear containers, which is why I thought they would be great for this particular application because I am going to be putting some heavier things in here, like bottles of shampoo and lotion and shaving cream and stuff like that. So what I did first is I just started taking everything out of the closet and trying to organize it. And I did have, you know, some things in there that were expired or not good anymore. Um, typically personal care products do expire or maybe lose their efficacy. I'm not sure, you know, probably 24 months, I would say, you know, one to two years after you open them. Um, so there were some things in there that I ended up having to toss because I don't know, I, I think I had Bath and Body Works um, lotion in there that I think was at least <laughs> at least three years old. So I did end up tossing that. But in this larger bin here, I'm just going to try and put all of my um, shampoo and conditioner. I love trying all types of different shampoo and conditioner. And so what ends up happening is I end up having like half bottles <laughs> <laughs> that I need to use up. And Kira will come into my bathroom sometimes if she runs out of something, like if she runs out of shaving cream or you know shampoo or conditioner or something like that, she knows she can come in and grab something. So I kind of wanted to have them all in one space so that we could easily see what we had and use it up. And I also discovered that I had quite a few facial cleansers as well. That was another good thing about this particular exercise was that I actually got to see everything that I have. And now I won't be buying stuff at the store that I don't need. Okay, so in these smaller containers, I decided to organize some of my travel size things. I had so many of these. I don't know what exactly has happened over the past year, but I think every time I order, like I, I like to use Clinique um, for my face. I use a lot of different things. I use Clinique, I use Tula, I use, I use lots of different things. But anyway, whenever I order from Ulta online, they typically have like a free gift deal. And so if there's a free Clinique gift, I always get that. And so they always include in there like little travel sizes of, um, so, you know, face wash and lotion, which is actually really convenient because typically I do travel fairly often for work. Um, I haven't been over the past couple months, but starting in April, that's going to start to pick back up again. So I will definitely uh, be using <laughs> using these, but it's nice to kind of have them all in one spot. That way you can see, you know, what you have and it'll be easy to pack my travel bag when I need to, because everything will be right there. I just know I'll have to grab like, okay, I need, uh, you know, some toner, some eye makeup remover, some lotion and some cleanser. Boom, done. Okay. So in this container, I decided to put all of my travel size hair items and and again, same thing. I had all of these like free gift bags and just different travel supplies I've collected over the past couple years. Um, so in this bin, I ended up putting like travel sizes of dry shampoo, travel sizes of hairspray, um, shampoo, conditioner, smoothing spray, cream, I don't know, just all of the things that I had. And um, like I said, I have way too many things. I, I realize that, <laughs> but I feel like now that they are at least organized, I can start to go through them um, a little bit better. And some of these containers end up being refillable as well. Um, so like some of the eye makeup remover and, you know, shampoo and conditioner and things like that, those are all bottles that can be refilled and used again. But I do really like this 
size of these containers. I actually think that uh, um, if you go to Walmart, I don't know if they still have them in stock there because I got these probably a month ago, um, but they have different sizes. And I think these smaller ones are really great for organizing drawers, um, but they're also great for something like this because they're clear. And so you, you know, they're clear and shallow and it's really easy to see everything that is in there. Thought these tiny little containers were super cute. So in this one, I ended up putting all of my razor refills. Um, I also could not find these in the terrible mess of my closet. So I was glad to get all those out and see how many I have. And yes, I probably don't need to purchase any for a while. And then in this other bin, I decided to put cough drops because I feel like we're always looking for those and when we're looking for them, we can never find them. So here is what the closet looked like as I started to get it cleaned out. Um, and then you can see the mess I have over here. I am trying to organize my nail polish and just get everything um yeah, my counter is covered. <laughs> my counter is covered in a bunch of crap, but we're gonna take a break from this and go downstairs and make dinner. Okay, so tonight for dinner, I am making chicken pot pie and I'm very excited about it. No, not really. Well, kind of, it turned out <laughs> it turned out really good. So I actually purchased some pie crusts a while back, um, just pre-made ones. And what I'm doing now is just chopping up some onion for the gravy, but I thought I had some turkey left over from Thanksgiving in the freezer. As it turns out, uh, no, we already ate it at one point I can't remember for what and so I ended up having to use shredded chicken for this but it worked out just fine so um, I'll post this recipe down below I have one in my cookbook um, that uses a homemade pie crust but there's one on I think pillsbury.com that's very similar um, that you can use and it turns out really really good so the first thing that I'm doing is getting some onions chopped up really really fine and I'm putting those in the skillet with some butter for the gravy you do need some chicken broth. So I like to use the Knorr um, chicken bouillon. I just find it super convenient and I don't have to keep big cartons of broth in my fridge and my pantry. So I'm going to mix that up in some warm water. And then I did decide to add some garlic to this just to give it a little bit more flavor. Highly recommend that. So I'm using this um, kind of like garlic mincer contraption that I like to use sometimes. I'll link it down below. I found it on Amazon, but it works pretty well to mince the garlic when you don't want to dirt your garlic press. Okay, so here are my onions sauteing in the butter. I added the garlic to that. Next, I'm going to add about a third of a cup of flour and stir that up. And once the flour has a chance to cook out a little bit, you can add your broth. I also wanted to mention you can make beef pot pie as well. Just use like shredded or cubed beef and beef broth. It's delicious too. Um, I added some salt and pepper to that and I'm going to add the chicken broth and whisk that up. And then once that comes together into a gravy you do want to add some milk or some half and half um, I added half a cup of half and half and at this point you can taste it and see if it needs more salt or more pepper I did add a little more salt to mine and then you can mix in the rest of the ingredients so I used uh, about two and a half cups of shredded chicken um, that I had on hand you can use a rotisserie chicken or you can shred your own and then I also added two cups of frozen mixed vegetables okay so now that the filling is done I'm going to prepare the pie crust. So like I said, this is just a boxed pie crust mix from Pillsbury. You can make your own if you want. You can buy it boxed. They're, I mean, they both turn out good. And I have a deep dish uh, Pyrex pie dish here, and I'm just going to fit the bottom crust into that, just trying to press it against the sides um, as well as I can, of course, without making any holes in it. And then I'm going to add the filling very carefully. This was actually the perfect amount of filling for this particular pot pie. I would definitely definitely recommend using a deep dish pie pan if you have it because I feel like if I would have used a regular pie pan this would have spilled over and then once you have the filling in you can put the top crust on and then I just pinch it together the best that I could I'm not very good at <laughs> I'm not very good at this um, but just try to um, make make the best decorative edge that you can although this is not a pie decorating contest so don't worry too much about that I wanted to make sure the top of the pot pie got brown so I'm going to 
gonna go ahead and brush that with a little bit of egg yolk and um, sprinkle it with a little bit of salt. This part is optional, but it does help the top brown. And then you wanna make sure that you do cut some slits in the top um, because if you don't, then um, the pie might kind of explode a little bit in your oven and it's gonna make a mess. So definitely cut some vent holes in the top. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I'm trying to use up all these potatoes that I have in my pantry. And since I didn't put potatoes in the pot pie, I'm gonna go ahead and slice some up and roast them in the oven. Uh, my kids actually did not like the pot pie too well. I don't know why, it's just like very plain, <laughs> like chicken, gravy, vegetables, and crust. But you know, kids are, kids are weird like that sometimes, but they did obviously love the potatoes. So I'm just slicing these up. These are just some small um, Yukon Gold potatoes that I got in my Misfits Market box and I washed them under warm water and I'm just cutting them into probably about, I don't know, half inch, no, probably not half inch, probably quarter inch, um, slices and then I put those on a baking sheet. I drizzled them with some olive oil, seasoned them with salt and pepper and I just roasted them in the oven along with the pot pies so at 425 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes until they were tender. Okay so here is that pot pie when it came out of the oven. You can see that it got a little bit brown on the top but it was not burnt. Turned out really good and this is a terrible clip because of the coloring but I could not get the lighting right <laughs> in my kitchen um, and it actually doesn't look very impressive at all but this is my slice of pot pie that is not really a slice anymore but the important thing is is that it turned out delicious and highly recommend this recipe okay so i want to show you guys the finished product in my bathroom tada this is so much better i finally feel like i can breathe when i open this door and i'm not scared that things are going to fall out so i was able to kind of organize everything with plenty of space we don't really keep a lot of linens in here we have a linen closet in the hallway for that but let me just show you kind of how I organized everything. So I have some Kleenex there at the top. Um, I also keep our um, like cotton pads and Dixie cups and soap in there. And then I also have my um, kind of blow dry brush in a little container, um, some light bulbs, and then Adam's travel items. Here's that big bin of shampoo and soap and everything that I organized that turned out really well. And then I have all of my travel items, uh, some toilet paper, I need to actually go to Sam's and get more toilet paper. Um, our towels that we keep in the bathroom. Um, here is just some miscellaneous items like foot soak and sunburn gel and toothpaste, toothbrushes, um, floss, different things like that. My water pick, I got that when I got braces <laughs> put on. It's very helpful. Um, all of the different medications that I keep up here, all of my travel items. And then in the bottom, um, we keep some items like some first aid items, um, a blood pressure cuff. I put all of my um, nail polish on this spinning tray which actually worked out really well um, and then just some personal care items and yeah I really like how that turned out so 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 much better and now I feel like I don't know I just I love it I love how it turned out and then all of the cleaning supplies I put back under the sink um, so I have some trash bags down there obviously some odds and ends of cleaning supplies um, Adam had to replace our faucets a while back and so that's why I had removed all the cleaning products out of there, but now that that's done, I can put those back in. So I also wanted to show you guys, Adam hung up some new um, pieces of art in our bedroom. I originally had mixed tiles in here, but um, I did not hang them upright and I just did not like the way that they looked. I ended up putting them downstairs and they look much better, but these um, paintings are from Lindsay Letters, um, so I can link them down below, but I love the way that they look above our bed. Of course, Murphy is trying to take a nap, but I just wanted to share that with you guys as well because I know I shared the original kind of bedroom makeover here on my channel too but definitely love how that turned out I think they're super pretty so that is going to be it for this week's weekend prep video don't forget to check out Warby Parker to get your free home try on I'll have that link down below it's warbyparker.com slash Jen thanks again for all your support and for being here on my channel I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one bye